Today we're joined by a colleague from the Civil Aviation Authority to find out about the many different careers in the aviation sector. Thank you to the CAA for being involved in this event. Today we're joined by Susanna White, who works as a People Engagement Consultant at the Civil Aviation Authority. Susanna is going to tell you a bit about her job and how she got to be a People Engagement Consultant. Before Susanna gets started, we'd like to ask you a question. What's your favourite story? Because Susanna's job is all about communication, she has to listen to people, talk to them and help them work together. But mostly, Susanna tells stories. Does that surprise you? Because we all like stories. Susanna doesn't tell stories about dragons to the people she works with. What she does is tell stories that help people understand what the CAA does, which is to keep planes and people safe in the sky. She also has to explain to the people she works with why their jobs are important, so that they can come into work every day feeling excited and happy about what they do. And it's Susanna's job to help them do that. And communication is a really important part of her job too. So, how did Susanna get to where she is now? What kind of journey was it? Let's hear from Susanna. To get us started, Susanna, what was your favourite subject in school? School was English, especially writing stories. I found maths and science really hard, so I had to do lots of extra work to catch up, but I could write stories. And I was very lucky because I had a very inspiring teacher called Mr Stone, who told me to follow my dreams. But when I left school, I didn't get very good grades, so I couldn't go to university. And that meant that I had to think really, really hard about what I wanted to do. And so what I did was I got some typing exams and some shorthand and I became a secretary. And one of my first jobs was working here at this hotel, which is a very lovely hotel called Lucknow Park. And it was one of my favourite jobs because I got to work with lots of different people from around the world. And I got to do lots of creative things, which meant that I could use my writing skills and my design skills. But again, it was one of those jobs where I had to work very, very hard. Before I tell you one of the things I really love to do, can anyone guess what kind of spider this is? If I give you a clue, it's a very big, scary spider. Lydia, do we have any, any answers coming through? Any ideas? Not just yet, but I have a feeling I know which one it might be. <laughs> Shall we give it a moment? And, yeah. and I'll tell you that one of the things that I really love to do is travel. And this is a picture of me on the right in front of a very big waterfall um, in a country called Ethiopia. They're called the Tissasat Falls. Now, is one it of the tarantula, Susanna. Yes, it is a tarantula. <laughs> well done, the person who, who suggested that. It is indeed a tarantula. And actually, they're, they're not as scary. I, I think they, that there's, a, there's a thing about tarantulas where um, I think it, you, can, you can play around with them. <laughs> um, yes, they're not, they're not so vicious and less um, provoked, but it is definitely a tarantula. But one of the trips I went on was very, very important to me. It happened when I was traveling in a country called Egypt. And on the left, you'll see Tutankhamun, and he's very, very famous um, boy king. Um, but I saw some hieroglyphics on a wall and I couldn't read them. I thought, oh my goodness, what are these funny scribbles saying? Um, and that was a big moment in my life. So what I did was um, I went back to college. It inspired me to go and study ancient Egyptian literature. And then as a result of that, it made me change my job so that instead of being a secretary, I went into communications and marketing. And off the back of that, I improved my writing skills and that led me to writing a story about an Egyptian mummy, which got published in a magazine called People's Friend. 
After that, I went and worked for lots of different companies. Um, you've all been on a train almost certainly, but this is this is an underground train and it um, the brakes on this train are made by a company that I used to work for. Um, brakes help slow down the train, so they're really, really important. Um, but one day you might be working for a company like that. And so that was really the start of my journey. That was how I got to the Civil Aviation Authority and led me to being here talking to you today. And the thing is, where I work, the Civil Aviation Authority, it's a really exciting place to work. There are lots of different skills that you're going to need to work in aviation. And the thing is, you're all very good at listening, aren't you? Because listening and reading are two skills that I use all of the time in my job. They are very, very important skills to have. And the reason that they're important is because reading helps me tell better stories and listening helps you understand people and work as part of a team better. It helps you to collaborate, which in business today is very, very important because we work with lots of different teams. And there's something else which writing has taught me, and that's making sure I get my work done on time. I have to meet what we have deadlines. And I'm sure you must have homework that you have to do, and it must be very hard to finish it on time sometimes. But one of the things that my job really teaches me is that you have to get things done on time. So it's a very useful skill to have. Now, this is a picture of an airport which shows you some of the things that the jobs that you could get involved with if you go into aviation and aviation is used every single day it's used to supply food parts passengers for business uh, people going on travel going on, on holidays and it supports other things like film and tv and the police and air ambulance and you might find yourself being involved in air traffic control, cabin crew, aircraft engineers, and all of these need lots of different skills like science, technology, engineering, and maths. And there are going to be skills gaps, we, we, we call them that, which means that there are not going to be enough people with all of these skills. So we need them to help us improve and there are lots of exciting opportunities, um, such as aircraft engineering, which you can see in this picture here. Um, aircraft engineering requires practical problem solving skills, such as science and maths and the ability to build and design things. And then you've got air traffic controllers who keep people safe in the sky. They control the skies and make sure that all the planes get to the right place at the right time. And you've got to have good communication skills to be an air traffic controller. And this picture is absolutely amazing because can you imagine this is what the skies typically look like? There are lots and lots of different planes here all flying above us at any one time. 10,000 aeroplanes. And if you think about it, you know, it's over a million people could be in those planes at any one time. And on the ground, this is Gatwick Airport, we rely on engineers to ensure that the airports run smoothly, that the planes get to the right places and that people get to the right planes. And it's one of the busiest airports with only one runway. And over 24,000 people work there. And here we've got a pilot. Now this lady is, is the first female pilot in Rwanda, um, which is pretty incredible. And she is one of the very highly organized people who can control all of the computer systems on board this aircraft. So she's got to be very, very organized and she's got to have good maths and science skills, but she's also got to be good at communicating, you know, as well as being calm in a crisis. Um, and pilots spend a lot of time in something called a simulator, which means that they, they learn how to work the plane, but they're not actually flying in the sky. And the other thing about being a pilot is you've got to be able to work well as part of a team. So there are lots of different skills that you need in aviation and um, technology is changing all the time. This is a picture of a drone. 
drones are going to become very, very important and help do more jobs in the future, potentially saving energy and making things quicker. And it's estimated that in the future, there are going to be more and more people flying and aviation needs to get much, much greener. And this picture here shows how space flight could be a real possibility in the future. Can you imagine flying to places, you know, galaxies away um, in, in a few in a few hundred years, I would think. But it is getting more common and the UK wants to open its own spaceport and that could send rockets into space and um, it could it will mean a, a very much more exciting world to live in such as Virgin Galactic taking passengers into space. But the thing is, whatever you do in your career, you must do something that you love. And that's something that I've learned um, through all of my career. My advice is to make sure that you follow a path that you're passionate about, that it's something that you really, really want to do. And don't allow yourself to think that you can't do it because you can, you must have faith and belief. And I have huge gratitude to all of the people who've helped me to get where I am. So thank you very, very much for having me and for listening. Lydia, are there any questions? Is there anything anyone would like to ask me? Yes, we have a good few questions actually. Um, and the first few questions um, actually came through when you were talking about books. So we have some questions about um, who or what inspired you to um, become a writer and enjoy books and maybe do you have a favourite book? I always loved reading and um, one of my favourite books um, was a book about um, Ferdinand who was a bull and he liked to just sit very quietly and smell the flowers. He didn't want to go into a bull ring and he didn't want to fight. And it was one of my favorite stories because um, no matter what happened, all of the people who were trying to force him to fight, Ferdinand stuck to his guns. He just wanted to be a gentle, happy bull living quietly smelling the flowers and I loved that story I, it really it was one of my favorites and I would get my mother to read it over and over again um, now what, what was the other part of the question Lydia and uh, was there anything specific that inspired you to write yes Think about your um, Egyptian published work Yes, yeah, so um, I absolutely adored um, ancient Egypt and, and that really inspired me to, to write that story about the mummy. Um, and I think one of the other things that when you write, it's, it's a difficult thing because you have to think in terms of writing what you're passionate about, what really um, excites you, because if you don't, then you're not going to get across that sentiment to people. Um, you'll just be writing in a very reactive, formulaic way. You've got to think, what, what, what do I like to read? What, what excites me? And then you put your heart and soul into that and it makes a better story. And I think some of the stories that I've written that have been successful have been the ones where it's been when my heart and soul has been in it, when you can really feel the characters coming off the page. Um, when you don't feel that about a character, um, you're not going to inspire readers in the same way um, because they will pick up the fact that you don't love the character as much as possible. So you think of all the books that you've, you've outlined to me, the Wimpy Kids, the Jacqueline Wilsons, they're all strong character driven stories and they've all got something in their lives that's you know troubling them or that they have to overcome. And it's very much like our own lives. We have to find the solutions. And I think when you're passionate about those characters, um, it becomes much easier to write them and they become more powerful on the page. Amazing. I think we have some inspired um, authors in the audience of the future, so I look forward to that. We have some questions as well about aviation, and I think um, a question with your lovely um, 
photo of the airport and talking about all the different planes and we're wondering if airplanes that carry food do they look different to normal airplanes that we would go on you've got many different types of of aircraft and you will have um aircrafts that are dedicated that the, the bigger the bigger ones um that will be dedicated for carrying um cargo as well i don't i didn't actually put a picture of a cargo plane up there um, but i think we mostly think of planes as carrying passengers um, but there there will be um and then if you think of the army planes the the, the big chinooks that carry um all sorts of different um well apart from people they'll be carrying um i want to say weapons um that they'll be carrying other resources um as well brilliant um, and then another pick, uh, question that I think that lovely map you had with the so many airplanes in the sky. How do the people in the airport know which plane is which and where it's going? That's a very, very good question. <laughs> They've got a lot of very clever equipment um, that tells them. And I'm not an expert about this. I think probably one of my colleagues would be able to, to answer it a lot better. But they have a lot of very technical equipment that allows them um, to understand where everything is in the sky and to manage those situations very, very carefully. Um, so they are in front of big screens and they've got lots of, of different kits and buttons and levers and things that they would press. Super. Uh, we're very excited about the spaceport as well. Um, questions about do we know where it's going to be? And do you think that we'll be able to travel to space like we travel to other countries? Well, I don't know where the spaceport is going to be, but I'm sure um, at, at some point we'll, we'll find out. I think, I think that's in a while. I, I would like to think that one day we might be able to go into space and, and travel to lots of different places. I mean, we've all probably seen Star Trek um, and, and are quite excited about that and, and what that might be. But I think it's a long time in the future. But, you know, you've, you've already got the Elon Musks of this world going up into space, haven't we? And, and even William Shatner the other day um, going up and then, then down again quite quickly. Um, but it's it will one day, I'm sure, become a reality, but maybe maybe not just yet. It's very exciting. And <laughs> um, we have another question about your job, Susanna, and what's your favourite part of your job? My favourite part of my job is is probably listening to people um, and talking with them and, and really understanding um, what what makes their job special because for me to do my job well i have to really understand um what makes people happy what makes people excited about coming into work and we conduct surveys um which i find quite exciting because we get lots of comments back from people and we get lots of data telling us what people like and what they don't like and then actually being able to use that data to make improvements um, so that we can say to people, well, you told us this and as a result, we've gone and we've done this to help you, um, which is which is a nice thing to be able to do. You know, the, the collaboration piece, working with different people, working with different teams. It's really important in businesses now that um, you you're le you know, when, when you're at school and you're working in teams, that's really important because it's preparing you for the business world, because you'll have to work with different departments, different people. And the sooner you can get into really good habits about sharing and um, listening to people and, and, and working as part of a team, that will be really valuable when you're older and you go into, into a workplace. Amazing. And we have one last question and it is, do lots of women work in aviation? They do, actually. The numbers are um, creeping up. You saw some of the pictures there. There are women engineers. There are women pilots. Um, it is really important that if you want to consider a, a career in aviation, that 
you know, women shouldn't be put off. There are many jobs. I mean, in my department, there are lots of women working in human resources. Um, there are lots of women working in right across the Civil Aviation Authority and in aviation in general. Um, and I think it's really important that you don't rule yourself out of these things, that you think seriously um, about all of these different jobs. And, and as I say, you saw the pictures where there was a woman engineer sitting um, in, a, in a plane. Um, they, they are out there. We just need more of them. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Susanna, for joining us this morning. It's been absolutely fantastic and really interesting to hear about your job and get a little look into the world of aviation. So it's like we almost travelled on an airplane this morning to find out all these amazing things. Thank you everyone for joining us and for your fantastic questions and your answers to Susanna's questions as well. So I hope you have a good rest of the day and thank you everyone. Thank you.